is Tiffany and welcome back to Upcycle by Tito where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. Before I start today's video, I just wanted to say that I officially have over 100 subscribers and I'm so, so excited about it. It's been so encouraging to see my channel grow. So if you guys like my videos, please subscribe and share them with your friends. Anyways, in this video, I'm going to show you how I turned this dress into this Reformation inspired dress. I found this dress at a Salvation Army and the day I bought it, pink tags were half off, so I bought it for $3. And the dress that I'm turning it into is the Reformation Chianti is that how you say it? Chianti dress um, and the reason I picked it was because it's just nice and flowy and simple and you can dress it up you can dress it down and I feel like it'll be a really good staple to have in my wardrobe so let's get right to it let's take a look at this reformation dress that we'll be recreating it has a pretty simple silhouette it features a V neckline and it has these really delicate straps in the back the straps are connected to the dress by these little loops now that we have all of those details, let's get started. You'll need a sewing machine, an overlocker, iron and ironing board, thrifted dress, a ruler, fabric shears, sewing pins, safety pins, measuring tape, fabric marker, seam ripper, invisible zipper, loop turner, and a needle and thread. This dress is straight out of the 90s. It's pretty shapeless, it's fully lined, and it's got these waist tie things. Oh, hi, Daisy. The game plan for this dress is going to be relatively simple. From the front of the dress, we'll cut out a pattern that looks something like this. For the back, we'll draft a pattern that looks like this. And with whatever fabric we have left over from the sides, we'll use that to make the straps. I'm gonna go ahead and seam rip this dress. Um, I'm basically going to take the entire thing apart because I wanna have like nice flat pieces to work with. You can also go ahead and cut this apart if you like, um, but I just wanna make sure that I salvage as much material as I possibly can. And also, I don't know why, but I'm like super weird about like cutting garments apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and seam rip it. I've just finished seam ripping the dress and I have two pieces for the front and two pieces for the back. Um, because the original dress had a zipper attached to it, um, the top part of the back panel is split open, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use a straight stitch and sew this closed, and then we can start making our pattern. Now that all of my fabric pieces are ready, we can go ahead and take some measurements so we can draft our pattern. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure my bust, and for me, that measurement is 33 inches and I'm going to add two inches to that measurement because I want it to be a little bit loose and flowy and not too tight Next I'm going to measure my waist My measurements is 27 inches and I'm actually gonna add three inches to the waist measurement because I want the dress to be comfortable But still flatter my silhouette the next thing I'm gonna measure is my hips and that measurement for me is 37 inches and again, I'm going to add three inches to that measurement. The next thing I'm gonna measure is um, how low I want that V to sit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at my collarbone and measure to where I want the V to be. And I think I want it right here. So for me, that's six inches. And then I'm also gonna measure from the center of my body from where my collarbone is to how far I want that strap, um, like where I want it to be. And so for me, that's five inches. Now I'm also gonna measure the distance from that V to where the waist sits. So for me, that will be seven inches. And I also need to know the distance from my waist to the widest part of my hips. And that for me is 10 inches. And I also wanna measure from where like this part meets, like the fabric under my arm to the waist, six inches. Now that we have all these measurements, we're gonna go ahead and draft our pattern. All those numbers are probably super confusing, so I'm gonna draw a diagram that hopefully will be helpful. Our bust measurement is 35 inches, waist measurement is 30 inches, and our hip measurement is 40 inches. The height of the V is six inches, the distance from the strap to the center is five inches, the distance from the bust to the waist is seven inches, from the waist to the hips is 10 inches, and from the armpit to the waist is six inches. I'm gonna be using the lining fabric to draft my pattern because even though it's completely see-through, it has way more structure than the other fabric. The first thing I'm gonna do is fold it in half and pin it in place. 
Now, I am identifying the original waist of the dress and drawing a line to mark it. Then, I measure 7 inches from the waist and draw another line. This will be the lowest point of the V in the front of the dress. Now, measure 5 inches from the fold and draw a perpendicular line from the mark you just made. Measure 6 inches and mark. With your ruler, join these two points. Now, I'm drawing another line an inch and a half from the lowest point of the V. This will be our bust line. Measure 10 inches from the waist and make another line. This is your hip line. Take your waist measurement and divide it in four. Mine is seven and a half. Measure and mark. Do the same with your hip measurements. I'm measuring and marking to 10 inches. Now, join those two points that you just made. I've divided my bust measurement by four and my measurement is eight and three quarters. Measure and mark. With your ruler, join those two points. Measure six inches from the waist and mark. Now, using your ruler, draw a line between these two points. Now, I'm just freehanding some curves and smoothing out any hard edges. With your ruler, extend the new side seam all the way down to the hem. Time to cut. Cut along the pattern you just made, leaving a half inch seam allowance. Fold the floral fabric in half and lay your folded lining piece on top of it. Pin to secure and then cut. Now, you should have two pieces that look like this. Moving on to the back of the dress, I folded it in half and pinned it in place. Once again, I'm identifying the original waist of the dress and making a line. Measure 10 inches and draw your hip line. I'm measuring 5 and a half inches from the waist and drawing my bust line. Using the same steps as we did in the front of the dress, mark out your bust, waist, and hip measurements. With your ruler, go ahead and join those points. Measure 6 inches from the waist and mark. Now, I'm just making a mark to identify where I want the lowest point of the curve to be. Draw a curved line to join those two points. With your ruler, extend the new side seam all the way down to the hem. Once again, smooth out any harsh edges. Cut, making sure to leave a half inch seam allowance. Pin the lining fabric on top of the floral fabric and cut. Now, you should have two pieces that look like this. So I've just pinned the front and back pieces along the side seam and I'm gonna sew them together. After I finish this, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the lining fabric and then we can move on. So I just finished sewing those side seams and I also did the same with the lining fabric. So now I have essentially what is two dresses. Um, I also wanted to show you guys that I overlocked the side seams just so that they're nice and neat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and join these two dresses together and I'm going to pin them right side facing together along the entire top and then I'm going to sew. So I just pinned the entire top part of the garment together and I'm about to sew it but I wanted to show you guys that I'm not gonna sew this section and this section right here because that's where we're gonna insert the straps a little later. So I just finished sewing the dress all along the top and before I flip it to the right side, I'm gonna use my scissors and I'm going to make a little notch right where this V is, the center V. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm actually gonna cut as close to the seam as possible. You can see I've made that cut. This is because um, when I flip it back to the right side, I wanna make sure that it has a little bit of give so that it can lay flat. So remember earlier in the video when I was very confidently measuring myself and adding three inches to my waist and my hips for a nice flowy fit? <sighs> well, I didn't add enough inches because I can't even get this dress <laughs> over my shoulders. <laughs> Tiny little speed bump in our journey to upcycling this dress. Um, I came up with a solution though, and I think I'm just going to insert an invisible zipper um, down the left side, and I think that should fix the problem. Um, other than that, I'm actually pretty happy with how like the V and everything turned out. I think it looks quite nice. The only thing I'm not really happy about is um, the curve that joins um, the two side seams together. So I actually want it to be a nice smooth curve and right now it's just not falling the way I want it to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this outside fabric and this lining fabric and I'm kinda gonna fold them together like that, like that. And I'm just gonna play with the shape until I find a nice curve. And once I have that, I'm just gonna pin that down. 
So I have my garment pinned, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use my fabric marker to make a line on that folded edge of the lining fabric. Can you see how I've drawn that purple mark on the lining fabric? And the reason that we're doing this is because when we flip it inside, this is what it looks like on the inside, and now we're just gonna sew along that line we just made, and that's gonna create that nice curve. I've gone ahead and sewn the curve on both sides, and now I'm going to seam rip the left seam so that I can insert the zipper. So I've just attached the zipper to the garment, as you can see here. Um, but I've only attached it to this outer fabric. I haven't attached it to the lining yet. And the reason I did that is because I wanna be able to still flip the garment inside out, like that. So now let's move on to the straps. To make my straps, I cut out a one inch strip of fabric and I use the excess fabric from the side of the dress. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half, right sides facing, and I'm going to surge along this edge. Um, and you can also use your sewing machine, but I wanted my straps to have a little bit more structure um, since this fabric is really sheer, so that's why I'm deciding to use my serger. So I've searched the entire length of the strap. We're going to use a loop turner to turn it inside out. Ta-da! When you're done with this, go ahead and make one more. To insert my straps, I have my garment flipped inside out. I've also attached a safety pin to one of the ends of one of the straps. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed it through that channel that we left open a little earlier. So you should have something that looks like this. Now I'm gonna use my sewing machine and sew a straight stitch to secure the strap. Then remove the safety pin and when you flip it inside out, it should look something like this. Go ahead and do the other strap. With both straps inserted, you should have something that looks like this. Now that the straps are done, let's move on to the loopy things at the back of the dress. So to make the loops, I'm actually gonna be using um, the original ties that came with the dress. And I'm sure you're wondering, hey Tiffany, why didn't you just use the ties to make the straps? They weren't long enough. So we're gonna use them to make the loopy things. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut um, about four inches and then I'm going to fold it in half, like that. And I'm just going to sew to secure. So now you should have something that looks like this. And that step is completely optional. Um, I just secured it because it's easier for me to insert this into the dress without it shifting, so that's why I sewed it. But if you don't wanna do that, that's completely fine as well. Now from this seam, which is the center of the back of the garment, I'm going to measure four inches and then make a mark with my fabric marker. Now from that mark that you just made, you're gonna seam rip a tiny little hole so that you can insert the loop that we just made. Flip the garment inside out. Now we're going to insert this the same way that we inserted our straps. Once you have it placed where you want, go ahead and secure the loop with a straight stitch. When you flip it over, you should have something that looks like this. Now go ahead and do the loop for the other side. As you can see here, I've got both loops attached to the back of the dress, and now I'm going to take my strap and I'm gonna thread it through that loop. And then I'm just going to make a knot at the end to secure. Repeat on the other side. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure the lining to the zipper. So I just sewed the lining fabric to the zipper and while I was doing that, I started flirting with the idea of maybe adding slits to the side of the dress because why not? Um, but the original dress doesn't have that. Thus began the internal battle of what I should do. So I decided to compromise and keep one side of the dress like the original and I added a slit onto the other side of the dress. This is completely optional though, and if you want your dress to look more like the original, go ahead and sew the seams all the way to the hem. The last thing we're gonna do is hem the dress, and what I'm gonna do is just fold over twice and sew with a straight stitch. I actually did this in last month's video, so I'm going to link that below if you guys wanna check that out. That 
was my tutorial on how I recreated the Reformation Chianti dress. Let me know in the comments below if you guys would like me to attempt to recreate something else. Um, if you liked this video, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and as always, thank you so much for watching.